So when the fundamentalist intellectuals in Egypt were were persecuted by Nasser, the Saudis were happy to welcome them to Saudi Arabia. Qutb's brother, Mohammed Qutb, was one of the people who fled uh, Egypt. He became a professor in, of Islamic studies in, in Saudi Arabia, and one of his students, in fact, was Osama bin Laden. So uh, there, there's a fairly direct connection that way, and that's not the only only connection but I hate to bring it down to a lower level but let's but, do that no I, I want to get to again a question I asked earlier <clears throat> alright let's go to Osama bin Laden if he were to tell you the four or five things you say it's not about just moving troops out of Saudi Arabia uh, and <clears throat> getting the settlers out of the West Bank so what is it if they want this to be a worldwide effort I get back to my question what could stop the terrorists or is there anything that can stop these terrorists well, I think that there's no concession that can stop. You can't bargain. I, there's no bargaining. The purpose of these terrorist acts is not to, is not to bargain with us. This is not like um, some labor union engaged in a struggle with the boss and somehow the boss's yacht gets burned down. And, and it's an act of terror, but, but everybody understands that it, it was meant to, to force a, a deal. You can't buy them all. Uh, it's, it's, it's not like that. It's, it's, the, the goal is to, is to overthrow the whole of, of, of liberal or secular civilization and create a, a new world, a completely new world. So the only thing that's going to defeat them uh, is really the only thing that's going to defeat them is, is, is to persuade them to abandon their ideas. Really the only thing that will defeat them is, is, is to win a, war of, uh, win a war of ideas. And how? Well, I, I I mean, let me again go to the basics here. If you're an Islamist or a radical Islamist and you believe in the Koran, how do you live your life? And and how do you want everybody else to live? I mean, the simple thing of, are women always veiled? Well, y yes, I mean, the, the doctrine, uh, the doctrine of, of, of the philosophy behind this, this doctrine is, let me go back to all the other totalitarian movements in order to, in order to make the comparison. Um, all of those movements had, had, a, had a utopian goal. And the utopian goal consisted of leaping into the distant past and at the same time leaping into the modern future. Thus, uh, Lenin and the Bolsheviks wanted to go back to, the, to what Marx had considered to be the primitive communism of... of, of you know the barbar the, the barbarian age or the primitive communism of the Russian peasants, but this primitive communism in the in the Bolshevik uh, version was also and especially going to be a leap into the future, into a scientific age, into a futuristic sci-fi future, uh, a, a perfect society. Mussolini marched on Rome in 1922 for the purpose of recreating resurrecting the Roman Empire, the days of glory of, of the Italian people. So he was going to recreate the Roman Empire. His followers were arranged in legions. They were centurions. They were, they, were, they were resurrecting the Roman Empire. But their Roman Empire was going to be modern, expressed by the kind of modern architecture that, that Mussolini went around building, which was exactly like the modern architecture that Stalin went around building. So in both cases, it was going to be a leap into the ancient past, which was also going to be a leap into the modern future. Any, so, any religious base in any of the Stalin, Mussolini, Hitler, the, Lenin? The, the, the real religious, the, the, the best example of a religious based uh, fascist movement was Franco's. Franco in Spain, Franco's idea was that that he wanted to return to the, to, the, to the Middle Ages of Spain when the Catholics of Spain were engaged in a crusade against, against the, the Muslims and against the Jews and 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 so he wanted to, his followers were the warriors of Christ the king and his goal was to was to resurrect the what he what he imagined to be what he fantasized to be the perfect catholicism the perfect catholic society of medieval spain and yet in his version of course this was also going to be modern and scientific and advanced and so forth so he had a religious vision uh, of of his ideas and his his goal which was which was going to be a, a perfect a perfect catholicism his was the most uh, uh, religiously oriented of, of the European totalitarian movements. Um, um, the others, uh, 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 in the case of, of, of Lenin, it was, it was anti-religious. In the case of the Nazis, they invented their own religion, which was, uh, you know, Nordic pagan 
Well, well, tell me if I'm wrong. Is it that Hitler, Mussolini, Lenin, Stalin, Franco, in the end, weren't they, it wasn't all about their personal power? I mean, hasn't this been discovered <clears throat> in years gone by, the torture, the terror, and all that stuff? It's all about their personal power, so you scrape it away, and were they ever really interested in their publics? And is this group interested at all in their publics? I don't think that with those movements it was about their personal power. That there's a difference between there are dictatorships and dictatorships. That uh, not every dictator is a Manuel Noriega. Manuel Noriega, as I interpret him, uh, was interested in his personal power, in his own wealth and prerogatives, and 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 the and the pleasant life he was leading as the dictator of Panama. Uh, and and there are a lot of dictators like that. The totalitarian movements have always been different, which is that they've always been um, uh, based on, uh, on on true believers and belief in the in, in the whole ideological system, and the notion of this revolutionary leap into the future society that's also going to be a leap into the past, the hatred for liberal civilization. All of this has always been sincere, and and. At at some level, each of the totalitarian leaders has has uh, um, genuinely wanted to do good. I say at some level, because at, at a different level, at a deeper level, yet each of these each of these movements has has always wanted to do bad, has wanted to do bad, has not just stumbled into doing bad by by mistake, and and for this reason, each of these movements has always been based on some notion of um, transgression of moral uh, of, of of moral values of rebellion against um, the 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 notion of morality and, and 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 the notion of a decent society that's why each one of these movements has has established its strength by by being ruthless for the sake of being ruthless of 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 killing people on mass for the sake of killing people on mass Shoot more professors was one of Lenin's earliest orders. That that with 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 Hitler the idea the the idea was always to kill millions and millions of people. Stalin too wanted to kill and did kill millions and millions of people. Not 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 to do them good, but to kill them. And then at a, at a deeper level, these movements have always existed in levels. At at a first level, they're for doing good. They're for creating this perfect society that could, that could inspire the idealistic support of, of somebody who subscribed to the ideals of that perfect society, however it might be described. Uh, but at a deeper level, the attraction of these movements has always been a kind of a cult of death, and every one, one of these movements has engaged in a cult of death, uh, some more than others. Uh, and so when you say, aren't these leaders finally each uh, engaged in, 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 in trying to get in, in their own power isn't, isn't it? Aren't these movements engaged in, in just increasing the power and, and, and privileges of the leader of the little top, a little group at the top? And the answer is finally um, no. Um, that 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 most of these movements or many of these movements have been led by people who are perfectly willing to die uh, for the movement. And in fact, might want to die because the notion of suicide is also inherent in these movements. Hitler and his top and his top men at the end killed themselves and they'd always made made it clear that suicide was going to be their their end the hitler youth were devoted to the notion of suicide that stalin uh, in the 30s was murdering communists uh, at, at, at a huger rate than anyone else has murdered communists nobody has murdered more members of a communist party uh, than the Communist Party of the Soviet Union under un, under Stalin, so that to join the the, the Communist Party and to, to in in the age of Stalin and to try and rise in it and become a leader under, under Stalin was to get ever closer to one's own death. Well, go then to Saddam Hussein. What? How does he fit into this? Well, I think Saddam Hussein is a pretty classic figure in all this. That that uh, Saddam Hussein. Um, uh, is or was? I mean, we're speaking at a time when it's not yet clear uh, whether he's 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 dead or alive. Uh, uh, Saddam Hussein is is a figure who who precisely has been unable to negotiate or work work his way out of the difficult jam that that he was in for many years. Was unable to do that precisely because there is 
I think there always was in his regime uh, an aspect of true belief in the, in the ideals of the of the Ba'ath socialist of the Arab Ba'ath socialist party, which was to create a, 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 a another version of the same totalitarian revolution. And I think there was always a uh, always a cult of death, an extreme cult of cruelty, and an acceptance that um, death might be the um, fate of the of the leaders and members but uh, we seen the palaces we saw the billion dollars taken away all for himself all for his family i mean right. isn't this another you see the princes uh, right. uh, the five thousand princes in saudi arabia and all is it uh, is that different well the saudi the saudi arabian thing is a little different uh, and that that so let's is that leave, all about themselves let's leave that let's leave them aside for a second but in the in the case of saddam hussein uh, the the idea that in the meanwhile the uh, the leader will have privileges there's uh, that's not at all contradictory to um, to this larger idea because each of these movements has always been based a around a uh, a cult of the leader and 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 the leader is always uh, stood forward as a genius as a divine figure as a more than human figure and 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 has always um, uh, e each of these leaders has has has, has led his life uh, as as a more than divine figure and has surrounded himself with the with the greatest uh, luxury and pomp all right let's go back to the next step in the process all right the you know saddam hussein's regime falls and before you know it the sunnis are all rallying around the ayatollah the leader, the imam, whatever. Yeah. What does that leader want now? And we go back to your your thesis in your book. If they want worldwide, what Sharia? Well, Islamic law. I, I think you're talking about the the the, the Shia, the Shia, and the, and 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 the uh, the kind of movement that um, uh, that's come to power, uh, for, that's been in power for many years in in, in Iran, next next door. And I would say that um, yes, I haven't been able to explain what 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 Kutub's final final goal is, and this is how to answer your question. That Kutub's that that each of these totalitarian movements in 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 Europe wanted to leap into the past and leap into the future. The Islamist movement, of which Kutub was the great philosopher, wanted to do the same. They wanted to leap into the remote past, but where Mussolini wanted to resurrect the Roman Empire, these people wanted to resurrect the ancient. Caliphate, the Muslim Caliphate of the seventh century, from from the days after the Prophet Muhammad, from the days when the, when 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 the Arabs, having having accepted Islam, were conquering the world. So they looked back on the on the Caliphate of the seventh century, as the golden age, which were they they were going to resurrect, and and the golden age meant meant Sharia or Quranic law, the mo the strictest version of Quranic law as you see it in the in the, in the Quran. A strict reading of of all the rules and regulations and laws and punishments and 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 mode of life as 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 described and prescribed in the Quran. Let me let me just interrupt to read what you've written on page sixty four. What's the uh, what's a shura or a surah? Uh, those are the chapters of the Quran. All right, and I just want because it it helps if people haven't followed this. Right. The surahs lead him to discuss. You're talking about kutub dietary regulations, the proper direction to pray, the nature of prayer, the rules of divorce, the question of when a man may suggest marriage to a widow four months and ten days after the death of her husband unless she is pregnant, in which case after delivery. Is that a man-made law or is that, did that come from God to Muhammad? Uh, these 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 are are Quranic laws and 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 they're part of the uh, Quranic revelation. The rules concerning a Muslim who wishes to marry a Christian or a Jew very complicated, you say. The obligations of charity, the punishment for crimes and for breaking one's word, the Hajj or pilgrimage to Mecca, the prohibition on liquor and intoxicants, the proper clothing to wear, the rules on usury and money lending, and a thousand other themes. Now, Kutub, I assume, wrote about all that. Right. And this is part of his if, of his exposition or commentary of on on the Quran. So he's going through the surahs, the, the the chapters of the Quran, which some of which are tiny and some of which are very long, and and they tell stories and they recount the history of Muhammad, and, and they do a lot of different things. And then he draws from this the 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 specific laws of of, of Sharia, which are either directly from the Quran or or uh, from the. Uh, sacred commentaries on on the Quran.